So welcome to the bookmap webinar. Uh, we'll go through the live order flow and then also the basics of bookmap, uh, what bookmap is showing you, uh, and then how to start to use it within the live environment. Uh, and um, we'll start off here with the risk disclaimer. Trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss. is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. You can go to bookmap.com. Uh, you can find out more by uh, clicking on explore here. Uh, click on the pricing tab here and uh, you can uh, give bookmap a free try for a 14 day trial period here. Okay. So there's just basically two versions of bookmap. There are the, there is the basic version and the advanced version. Um, uh, 49 per month, 99 per month. They are billed quarterly and you get that 14 day trial period here. Now the differences between the two uh, are these add-ons uh, and the ability to trade right from the bookmap chart. Okay, so uh, that is uh, important distinction because uh, the transparency that bookmap is showing you, uh, you're able to use within your trading and trade management very easily um, and uh, hide behind liquidity with your stops or front run liquidity with your uh, entry orders. Uh, and try to uh, just uh, enhance uh, and optimize uh, your trading. Okay, so the advanced version uh, offers uh, uh, a lot of very, very powerful new features or features in general. Okay, now uh, for those of you uh, looking to trade equities and you're new here, uh, then uh, then you might want to go with the package deal with the DX feed. Okay, the DX feed is NASDAQ total view uh, and it allows uh, all U.S. equities. Okay, and you get a 14 day trial period for these packages as well. Now it's just a package deal. It's the same book map basic and advanced uh, and you can get DX feed with these versions too. Uh, you just, uh, you won't get it as a package. You will just add it on uh, later uh, after you get uh, either the basic or advanced. Okay, so uh, it's all available here. This is just a, a package is all. Um, okay, uh, once you become a member, you come into the bookmap portal here, this link here, and uh, there's all sorts of features in here. Uh, you can go look at some of the features and components and the education tab. You'll find the recorded webinars and other webinars here. Uh, you can also go to our YouTube page. Okay, on our YouTube page, you'll find all of these as well. So, um, uh, here you can see all of the features and components here. They're in a playlist. Okay. Scroll down a little bit further. There are these order flow video snippets. Uh, they go through a lot of the same phenomena that we cover day in and day out here in the webinars. Uh, they just go through it a lot quicker. Uh, they're a lot more concise with one specific example. Okay, Here in the webinars, we're answering questions uh, and we're going through the details and the subtleties of context uh, of this kind of phenomena here. Right. So uh, anyway, that's the quick version here. Uh, there's also the bookmap education course here. It's part, parts one through four. If you want to check that out, uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, and um, uh, just underneath that, you'll find the recorded webinars. So all the recorded webinars are here. Okay, You can see yesterday's webinars right here. And then uh, one down further, uh, we here's a trader. Um, a very uh, highly respected trader, Futures, Futures Trader 71, Morad Askar, uh, and he's done uh, a number of webinars for us. You might want to check out and see how he integrates order flow and book map within the way that he trades. All right? You can also follow us here on Twitter uh, and get the most up-to-date uh, uh, information that's, uh, that's out there. Okay? All right. So uh, let's jump into Bookmap and uh, and take a look. Okay, and Francisco, no questions today. Uh, Francisco, your, your questions are great, uh, very insightful things. Uh, don't don't worry about uh, about that. Giving me a break. Um, uh, ask away. Uh, it, you are actually one that is uh, taking more advantage of the uh, webinars than uh, than others by asking questions. Uh, this is the time to go through in detail. Uh, and uh, answer these specifically for you because there are a lot of tools here uh, and uh, it's a, uh, a very, very powerful program uh, that offers all of these tools and just by asking, you might find just one little thing that might make a big difference for you. Like uh, one, for example, if you're a dome trader, 
Uh, and, uh, you know, we have our volume columns here. Okay. Well, you might not know that if I right click in one of the columns here, uh, I can format this column. Okay. Just click on format and uh, I can split that data out. So I won't have it in a profile, but I'll have it by uh, categorized by the aggressor. Okay. So now you can start to understand like uh, looking for momentum. A lot of traders look for the momentum in the, uh, in the tape or in the, uh, in the trading uh, and uh, and here's an, a good example. It's just starting to do this right now. So I'm actually going to reset this, uh, and I can just double click, and uh, and now I've reset that column, and I'm looking for momentum. And look at that momentum. Okay, nothing but sell volume. Uh, uh, well, and now now buyers are starting to pop in, and boy, I, I just can't help myself. Look why they are starting to pop in. We are hitting liquidity. Okay, at 24.62. Okay, so uh, that's what uh, uh, the the kind of insight you're going to see in this transparency in the marketplace. Okay, just a, a, and it can all start with a one one small question. It might be something that uh, you really utilize within your trading. Okay, so uh, uh, ask away uh, and get into the details of how some of these things work. Uh, because you can you can reset this again. Uh, you can have it reset uh, for specific times. Um, you know, a scheduled reset for every uh, every hour, minute, or second, or at a specific time of like 9:30 in the morning, etc. Okay, so it's uh, it's it, all all the data is here, uh, and um, uh, up uh, up to you. So uh, look at that nice V. I mean, uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful little V bottom right there, uh, and um, trading right back into value. Okay, so anyway. Um, uh, you can start to put those pieces together. So uh, it's so visual here. Uh, uh, we notice the sell volume. What if you can't, you, what if you didn't see this liquidity here? Okay. Well, you'd be missing a really big part of the picture here. What's going on in the market. Okay. Uh, market sold off pretty, pretty, uh, uh, quickly here. Four points very quickly into high liquidity here, uh, on the, um, on the bid and look at the reaction. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, you're going to see things like this all the time, uh, and um, uh, you know you wouldn't see that in a dome. I mean, you would see that high liquidity down here, uh, but uh, and then that that number is going to change, and it's going to be something else. Here we've got it recorded. This is what unfolded, and this is why. All right. Anyway, let me uh, let me go back and and start off here the the, the presentation, uh, and get right into. Um, uh, what Bookmap is showing you? Any new users out there? Uh, I, I know that uh, I, I reached out to you guys uh, this week, so um, uh, I know Digby and uh, uh, let's see, John and uh, Scott and a, and a few others. I know you guys are new, so uh, I hope you guys are enjoying these uh, these webinars and, and learning a lot. Uh, and um, uh, hopefully, you give that uh, that trial uh, uh, period uh, a shot, and um, a follow, you can follow along in these webinars. All right, so. Um, uh, anyway, um, anyone else uh, uh, new here that uh, is uh, looking at the names here? Not too sure. Y'all look pretty familiar. Uh, okay, Robert. Yeah, you are new. Okay. Um, well, welcome. Still learning. Yeah. Well, plenty to um, uh, Victor. Ah, welcome. First webinar. Excellent. Um, uh well, again, like ask away. I, I will. I'll, I'll explain what's going on down here uh, in some detail, uh, and talk about a flip of the book. Uh, Francisco was uh, uh, talking about that earlier uh, at uh, 2462. Uh, but look at the flip here. Okay. I mean, it, this is it's a little different flip than what we usually see, uh, and I, I can cover that um, another time. But look at where they were here on the bid before. Now they flipped over on the. They're on the offer at 64, 64 and above. That's where price is now accepting, right? And uh, they're lining up here uh, with high liquidity uh, at 64, okay? So this is a w pretty wicked little trap right here, right? Uh, and, and visualized uh, re really nicely. So, all right, let me, let me stop. And um, uh, for uh, Victor and Robert and, uh, and a few others here, let's just go over the basics, okay? So turn on the candlestick chart here. Uh, we're going to turn off everything else. And we're just going to look at the uh, this candlestick chart. 
Okay, this is a five-minute candlestick chart. Okay, the way it, my zoom right now, uh, I've got uh, 15 minutes of, of of a period here between each vertical dashed uh, white line here, uh, but um, uh, the um, so th these are five-minute candles. Okay, and what are what are you seeing in these candles? I mean, uh, uh, you know, what is it? What are they telling you? Uh, it's uh, you know they show you the open high low close of each of each period. You know the wicks you start to see buying and selling pressure like the uh, buying pressure here. Okay, uh, and um, uh, but uh, and and that's good. I mean you can you can start to read these, but uh, it at best you're kind of stretching here. Uh, there is so much more data uh, that you are not seeing in this candlestick chart. Okay, uh, we have a volume sub column here or sub chart. That, that's helpful. It gives us some clues here that there was a lot of volume in this area here. So that we know uh, by looking at the combination of the uh, candlestick chart and the volume. Uh, but um, uh, we don't know where that volume took place. Uh, we don't really know what unfolded in this auction here on this five-minute period whatsoever. Uh, we don't know where the aggressors were. Uh, was it a, a bunch of uh, aggressive buying? Uh, uh, or selling, uh, we don't know where it took place, uh, how it unfolded, uh, and um, uh, uh, yeah, that, that about covers it. <laughs> so uh, let's um, let's uh, turn on uh, some of the layers of data here, and I'm just going to turn on the best bid and offer. Okay, so historical best bid and offer. That's all we're looking at looking at here on the candlestick chart. Okay, already though we we can see and a few different things here unfold within this five minute period. Right? Just because we have the historical best bid and offer, we can see very clearly this was a V bottom. There was no retest of this. Uh, and um, uh, we can see the speed that took place here. Uh, how quickly this moved down and then right back up. Okay, uh, And we can also see this little pause beforehand up here. Okay, so now we're getting into just just because we have the histor historical best bid and offer, we can see the speed, but we're starting to see some of the microstructure uh, emerge into the chart as well. Okay, but let's turn on the volume now. Okay, so that 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 problem uh, of uh, understanding where that volume uh, is uh, going to be solved here. Okay, now we have the complete picture. Okay, we know exactly where the volume traded, uh, how much. Uh, and uh, and what type? Okay. Now graphically, we see these these big dots. If you can you can get the numeric values. You can click on the data tip tool here, and we can hover over one of these dots, and it tells me exactly what occurred here within this dot. I get the date, the time, what was on the ask at this price, and then the volume at this price level, and it's giving me the overall VWAP of this big dot. Okay. So uh, it, for you uh, you guys that uh, love the numbers. Uh, you can see exactly what what's uh, unfolding here by using this data tip tool. All right. So now let's uh, start to break this open a little bit more, though. Okay. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click on the hand tool. I'm going to hover over this dot, uh, and then now I'm just going to use my center mouse wheel to scroll in. Okay. Okay, and. I want to, okay, so now each vertical dotted line is showing one minute of data. So this five minute period between here and here, this is what unfolded in terms of transactions. Here's our, here's our microstructure here. Here's our break, very quick break of it, okay, with a lot of selling, uh, more selling here uh, than buying, as we can see in the pie display, okay, about three quarters more uh, selling than, uh, than buying. And then in this period here, it's, it's, it's equal. There's both buying and selling. Okay, uh, we actually do get kind of a, a retest here, a little little retest in this area here. Okay, now now watch though as I continue to zoom in. Okay, as I continue to zoom in, I'm breaking apart, uh, or I'm ex expanding the timeline here, uh, and um, I'm starting to see subtleties and details of of how this actually unfolded. As I continue to zoom in. Uh, we can see, and I'll, I'll just focus on that one dot here, okay? Look at this, okay? This is what really unfolded uh, at, in this time period, 
okay? And I can show exactly each each dot here, uh, it gives me the volume, okay? So, and you can see, look at how evenly spaced these are, uh, the, the buying here. This is algorithmic activity. They're lifting the offer here. Uh, I know exactly what traded. Uh, you know, we have a uh, uh, 115 uh, traded uh, within this area. In fact, I can also confirm that uh, with our um, volume column, okay? And I can format that to take off the VWAP here, okay? So there we go, 115 traded within this viewable range here. This is the action that occurred here, okay? So you can see that all of these little transactions, uh, you know, it constitutes, it's some, the summation of it is 115 in volume. That's how these markets trade today. You don't see those big block orders go through like you used to. Instead, they're broken up, and it kind of disguises the pic the picture. Uh, you'll see the flurry of activity f just flow through very quickly your time in sales. Uh, but um, and now you're getting some insight to exactly what occurred. Now, as I start to zoom back out, notice how I'm compressing that timeline. And as I compress this, uh, I'm compressing it into a bigger dot. Okay, and it's still giving me the overall. Okay, now now this this dot here represents 184 uh, in terms of volume contracts. Okay, so I still get the reference here uh, by zooming out, even though each event was recorded and plotted within Bookmap. Okay, now as I zoom out, I have more context, more and more context on a on a on a bigger uh, higher time frame. Okay, and then we give the overall in the in the pie display. So that's what you're looking at, uh, and that's that's uh, how Bookmap records the the volume here for you. Okay, um, and uh, now we have the insight. Uh, we understand what occurred here. We understand that there was aggressive selling. There was a battle down here between buyers and sellers, and then the uh, the buyers took took control here and and press price right back up. Okay, but there's still a problem here. We don't know where they're bidding and offering within this chart, okay? We'll usually turn to the dome for that. Uh, and uh, we wanna see what the liquidity is at these levels. This is your dome and book map, okay? Uh, best bid and offer is right here uh, with the, the two rectangles. Uh, my depth on the bid is right here. Uh, and then the depth on the offer is here, okay? Up to this white line. Okay, that's the current lit book at this at this moment, not uh, trading moment, but and you know in this in this ch uh, chart here uh, at about one uh, eleven thirteen Eastern time. Okay, so now uh, we can see these areas of liquidity, but the dome here uh, is good. It, it gives you the current state of the market. We understand where traders are lining up to to bid and offer, but there's a problem here with that because we don't. You can see these numbers change, and and now that current state is is changed. Uh, we don't know uh, where they were bidding and offering before. Uh, we don't understand some of these areas uh, in context to the auction, uh, and then um, a book map. This is where Bookmap solves that issue. Okay, we take this dome data and we extrapolate it onto the chart and plot it. So now you have a historical view of the limit order book. So let's turn that on, okay? Now we're getting a complete picture of this auction, okay? So now look at look at how, and we noticed it uh, in real time here, okay? How we saw this kind of flip and, uh, you know, just uh, more liquidity uh, at 64 jumping in, uh, supporting price uh, in, into this wicked move to the downside, hit the lows, and then they, they uh, move right back up. Okay, so, uh, uh, but now we can understand, and I'll, I'll just go through this here. Let's take a look. Okay, at 64, okay, here's 1,160 uh, uh, contracts at 64, okay. As I scroll forward, okay, and as price is coming down toward it, and okay, that's an important distinction, okay. Look how, look how uh, that, that turned into 1,200, not only at this price level here, but one, one below as well. We have higher liquidity coming in, okay, on the bid. They're interested, okay. 
And so now we're getting that kind of uh, understanding of, wow, there's a shift in this auction. Buyers are now interested here. They were down here interested. We can see it were, these, these areas were bright earlier. Okay, now they're interested up here. And that's a big shift. Okay, and we can see how price reacts to that shift. Okay, shorter term liquidity that jumps in the book that's very high will usually will repel price. It has a tendency to repel price. And it's, it's very easy to understand that statement by just thinking of um, a real auction. Thinking, uh, you know, if you show up to um, uh, the farmer's market, okay? And this, this, these white striations here, it, it's showing more liquidity coming into the book. Well, think of that as just more people coming into the auction. Okay, and getting aggressive. They want to be buyers. They want to be buyers at high levels here. They're kind of chasing after price. What does that do to price? You know, all of a sudden there's a huge demand. Well, price price will adjust to that demand and it goes up. It's looking for value. Okay. So that's what a skew in the book can can do to price. Okay, and we can see it working here. Okay, so that auction theory uh, is holding. Okay. So now we're getting a complete picture uh, of what this uh, this candlestick and this tail uh, uh, really uh, uh, the significance of it. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's jump back here and let's look at the live market now. Okay. And we can see now that auction shifted when we when we came down into this area, and uh, the buyers are still here and they're still at 64. And look at the auction here now on the offer. They're up here uh, between 66 and 66 and a half. And that's what's going on here. Okay. Okay. So now uh, you can see that the problems with that dome are alleviated here by uh, plotting it historically. Okay. Current market windows here. Okay. Best bid and offer right here. Last traded volumes here. All right. And you can, you can see it here as well. Right, best bid and offer right here. You're inside level one market. Okay, so, uh, but the the and and the you can see the the heat map will be changing uh, in this window here. Okay, to the left of the of of this window here, this vertical white line that doesn't change. I mean, you'll see you'll see the um, the heat map will uh, the reference will will change here, but this liquidity is now historical. Uh, where they were offering up in up in these areas here. This is historical, um, and it's been recorded. Okay. okay. But in here, it's still lit, uh, and they're still, um, you know, providing and pulling liquidity uh, all the time here. Okay. Let me get to some questions here, uh, and let me take the the candlestick off now, uh, because you can see that the the candlestick and its and some of the uh, issues that it's ha it has here. Um, uh, doesn't, you know, uh, we have much more transparency now uh, to what what this price action here meant within this tail. Okay. All right. Questions. Alexander has a lot of questions here, or big questions. Um, let's see. Uh, 2062. I don't have a lot of data in here, um, uh, Francisco, so I don't know. Um, uh, looking for that, uh, uh, I mean, we see the trap uh, for sure. One tick below the low here, uh, and high liquidity here. But uh, the, um, um, uh, I, I don't have a lot of data here, so I, I don't know what it looked like before um, this uh, around 10:15 or so. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. 1108 exhaustion. Up in this area here. Yeah, I mean, there's some trading up here. Um, really, uh, well, we, we can go back and we'll review this if you, if, you know, if we want to see exactly how this unfolded. Um, let me get to some of the bigger questions here because uh, I don't want to keep people uh, waiting here. Um,
Okay, Alexander, been using Bookmap for a month plus. Um, okay. Okay, this is a great question. Uh, you're asking about the liquidity, okay, the, if it's fake or not. Okay, let me, let me continue on here, read this. You, I think, I think that there's. I mean, uh, most of us are very um, capable, and we've been reading volume for a long time. That, that's one part of the order flow, though. Okay, understanding where the volume is taking place. I mean, this is how under, understanding liquidity here. I mean, right here, we're looking at understanding liquidity right now in this example at 64. And this is how it can help your trading, All right? Because uh, we understand why price, it, it, it V bottomed out of this area, but why is it holding up here? And the answer is right here at 64, okay? And that's gonna give you insight, okay? So for example, if you are still, if you are bullish on this move, Okay. Well, maybe you'd want to kind of front run some of this liquidity here. Okay. And this is a range now. So be a responsive buyer down in this area here. Buy and try to dump it off back up the top here. Okay. That's one uh, potential strategy. Okay. And um, now price is coming back down. And uh, Alexander, your question is, okay, these orders can be fake. Absolutely they can be fake. Okay, but we want to make a determination between longer term liquidity that stays in the book and shorter term liquidity that does not. It skews the auction uh, and then um, uh, uh, they, um, uh, they, they pull. Okay, so is this longer term liquidity? It's kind of medium term at the moment. And because look at how they're starting to pull as price price is starting to come down here. I mean they were they were behaving differently here. Okay, they really got aggressive and they stayed here. And look at the striations though is as as price is coming down they're starting to pull. So the context of this liquidity, um, you know, I, I would say that uh, they're not so keen. Uh, I mean they're showing interest. Don't get me wrong. They're they're, they're now sh showing interest here. Um, and, and they were previously as well. Okay. But with this behavior of them starting to pull a little bit and maybe they're starting to build out lower levels here, I have much more context and understanding of this area here. Okay. And this is important because as you note, uh, it could, they could just pull, but there's one caveat here. Um, and, um, why a lot of them will remain in the book is because if they want to get this price, they have to remain in the book. They won't pull. And they won't pull because if they do, they lose their place in line. It's a FIFO market. It's first in, first out. So if they're interested in buying and they're bullish, they're going to stay here. Okay, and I would say these guys here are showing a lack, uh, you know, a little bit of a lack of interest. I mean, there's some still at 64, no question. Okay, one tick above though, these guys started to pull. They weren't earlier. Okay, so we have a little context, to this insight to this area. But look at how they're they're pulling here, and look at right below. Okay, most likely it's the same same players here. They're adding liquidity at lower levels because at the same moment they start pulling here starts to kind of brighten up in some of these areas down here, okay? So are they really bullish? No, but they are bullish uh, because they're still providing liquidity. Um, uh, I mean, it's not as bullish, but they're still up here higher than they were down here. So we have context to this area, okay? And this is how to read the liquidity and put it, in, and put it to use uh, in your trading. And I would recommend uh, coming up here and just taking the volume off completely, okay? Because we're so good at reading volume and transactions that it is a distraction. We're not good at reading and understanding context of an auction, okay? This is a really good view. It really helped me learn uh, about liquidity uh, and, uh, and context to it within the market. 
Okay, so that's my assessment of this area here. Uh, and uh, that's that's my assessment. But I mean, this is factual data. Okay, this is the market. We can start to, we know that they were here earlier. We know that they started to pull. And we know that they're adding here to lower levels. That is fact. Okay, so it might be, you know, uh, they might not have the intent to trade necessarily at 64, but they're 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 in a zone here, and it's a lower area. Okay, so in this zone, they do have that intent. Right. Okay. Now let's see if we rotate up and we'll test the sellers here at 66. Okay, and they're getting aggressive. Let's read the context and the intent of these traders at 66. I would say this is aggressive because. Uh, here's the swing. Here's where price went. Okay, and they're below that, so they want to be sellers. Uh, and uh, so far, they're staying in the book. But they, like you mentioned, they it might be fake. We'll we will know, and we'll get uh, our answer as price comes up toward them, just like when price came down toward them here at 64. Okay. All right. So. Uh, understanding longer term liquidity that stays in the book has the intent to trade. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit and show. Well, I don't have a lot of data here, um, but some of this shorter term liquidity in some of these areas here, they don't have the intent to trade. I mean, they're not staying in the book. Uh, you know, there is it's high liquidity that then pulls. Okay, but these guys down here, they stayed in the book. And we see the, the transactions that took place, okay? And that's how it can help you, is making that distinction and determination between the intent to trade, okay? Now, we're gonna, let's see if we can rotate up and test these guys at 66, all right? Um, in, in terms of the market going really fast and being able to um, uh, still uh, put uh, value uh, on the liquidity here. Well, I mean, we've been doing it here for the last like uh, 15 minutes of this 15 minute period here. Okay. And understanding the intent here. Okay. So, I mean, I'm looking, I'm, I'm targeting that longer term liquidity. I, I'm not so interested. And I filtered out that uh, a shorter term high liquidity. Okay. And uh, here, here's how you do it. Okay. You can use the, uh, um, the cutoff tools uh, and, um, if, if you want to look at all that noise, um, then this is what your chart's going to look like, you know, something like this. And I would very much agree with you, Alexander, that uh, this is very hard to read. You know, it, it's, this is not giving me much insight. Even though I see all the subtlety and the adding and pulling of liquidity, so what? Uh, I'm only interested in those that want to trade, okay, or have the intent to trade. And let's filter for them, okay? Uh, we can really get extreme here if we want, okay? Uh, and um, uh, start to, to really filter it out, okay? So here, here's, now we're getting an answer to uh, the intent to trade here at 66. They pulled, okay? So uh, they got cold feet, okay? Where's the next area here of high liquidity? What are the, the guys even at, at 66 and a half, they pulled, okay? Let's see if we get a shift in the book here, okay? And we see interest start to come in uh, with high liquidity on the bid, okay? Maybe we'll trade up out of 66 and, and we'll have a new level and a new zone uh, where uh, a price will uh, trade and accept, okay? Right now it's rotating back down, okay, into this trading uh, range here, okay? But we might get, we might see that scenario. That's one potential scenario that can unfold. We'll see them get very aggressive here on the uh, on the bid, and we'll and we won't see the dots here because we've taken them off. But they'll lift the offer very aggressively, and we'll charge up into 68 up here. And why would it be 68? It's because that's where the liquidity is. That's another way that understanding liquidity can be really helpful. Okay, is starting to target areas. Okay, understanding like uh, and when they came in here. Uh, because they're going to play, they're going to place their liquidity at these areas here to get there first. Okay, they want to be first in line. 
Uh, so look for that behavior. Look at how these guys are starting to come in at 69 now. Okay, so just note that like these are areas where there's high liquidity and um, it's far away from price though. Okay, so uh, that's something also to note. Uh, and um, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, but uh, if we uh, uh, we see uh, aggressive uh, buying start to come in here, we see maybe aggressive uh, limit orders bid up uh, price. Well, we're going to come up and test where the market can trade, and it can trade where there is high liquidity. All right. So anyway, play around with your settings here. Uh, I think uh, you know you'll start. I mean, you can get very extreme with this. Uh, and uh, and target very specific uh, uh, things that uh, you that help you in your trading. Okay, for me this is a pretty good view. I, I like it. All right. Okay. Uh, Victor, let's see. Question on the white band and dark band. Uh, what is the significance? Okay. Well, I just went over that in, into detail, so I, I hope I answered your question, Victor. Uh, continue to ask if if not. Okay. Oh yeah, I mean uh, each Alexander, uh, each market is very different. We, we've been looking at oil the last few days. Okay, the bonds are very different uh, from those, uh, and they they all these markets trade very differently. There's no question about that. It's not that uh, uh, you know I'm only picking the ES because this is um, what most people trade. Uh, those uh, in the in the webinar here uh, are very accustomed to uh, uh, you know the S and P or or maybe the Nasdaq or uh, or oil as well, and uh, so we're just we're just covering the uh, the markets that uh, most people uh, are looking at. Okay, now you know obviously the the bonds uh, they move slower, and there's a lot of uh, heavy liquidity in there. And there's also something that you're going to see in the liquidity in the bonds um, that you're not going to see as much here uh, in the S and P, and that is a lot of hedging uh, and a lot of pairs trading. Okay. Uh, you know, you'll see, uh, uh, you know, they'll get into one position and, uh, you know, be hedging in, in another market or, you know, maybe another uh, uh, financial instrument like um, uh, the 10 year compared to the 30 year. OK, that goes on all day long in the bonds. OK, and you're going to see that. Uh, uh, and, you know, let me let me show you an example here uh, of the uh, 6E. OK, and let me zoom out a little bit. OK, now the 6E. Uh, the liquidity in here behaves differently as well. Note these striations, kind of every other uh, tick. Okay, it's pretty indicative of, and this is the euro. Uh, you know, you'll see it even more more striking on on uh, thinner markets. Okay, this is what the you know the the larger uh, uh, players. They every other tick, you'll see them uh, start to. Um, uh, uh, provide their liquidity. So you're getting insight to their behavior. Uh, just by looking at the liquidity here okay. and here it's getting layered okay uh, and we're starting to see the interest here All right now it's, it's also very typical these guys will pull there's a lot of uh, you know you, you see a lot of icebergs that go off in some of these areas and then uh, you know move back up but you know again the same principles are holding true we're, we're channeling here between high liquidity and market can trade down here Market can trade up here, and this is, these are these are that longer term liquidity act as magnets, whereas that shorter term high liquidity repels. All right, so those are some of the distinctions, and I've gone over this in uh, into some detail here. So let me uh, let me see if um, answered these questions. Okay, well. Um, Okay, let's let's turn on the volume dots here, and let me let me make an example with uh, uh, the how the liquidity can help you. I mean, um, okay, so now we've got the volume on, right? So now we can see where the transactions are taking place. And let me take the liquidity off. Why didn't it trade down here? Because it didn't. What kind of insight do we have here? Okay, we we have no we have no insight here. You can you can start to argue here 
you know, you're starting to see some uh, exhaustion here in some of the selling. And, and that leads to this rotation here. That's true. And you can see them right here is where, where we shift. We, you can see them uh, lift the offer with the green dots pulling price up into the high. That's true. Okay. But why did it stop here? And, you know, now we have the insight. This is how it can help. There. Here's the liquidity. And it's it's not it's not uh, any crystal ball or anything like that. It is just this is the market. This is where the market is being made, uh, and that's that's that. I mean, it, it's uh, you know why why price you know stopped here is because we we had um, uh, buyers starting responsive buyers lining up, and the sellers did not take them on. Yes, they did start to exhaust in some of these areas here. Okay, and then uh, we rotate back up to where. Why? Why here? Why not up here? Okay. I mean, you could you could argue maybe the swing high, but um, uh, it's the liquidity here. And 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 this is, this is an integral part of the market of of any market of understanding uh, the other side of the transaction. Here's here's the transaction where they occurred, but un understanding where they're bidding and offering uh, offers you offers you that insight here. Okay. That's why people look at the dome. That's why traders are, are trading off of the dome. But where it can be really helpful is when you can start to, uh, instead of in trying to memorize these areas here uh, in a dome, uh, because you'll have to, because it, these, these areas will refresh. But now you can see the history of it. All right. Okay. I don't want to be a dead horse here. Um see Alexander but these are excellent questions Alexander I hope that I'm objectively answering them for you uh, that is my intent let's see history is one thing but it... well okay so uh, understanding the, the history of that liquidity is um, very insightful okay they were interested here Okay, they're showing lack of interest as, as price is starting to come down, but they were starting to line up in some of these areas here, we noted. Okay, you're going to read that in a dome, it's going to be kind of tough. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, I am interested. If price comes back down here, you know, in, in your dome, were you going to remember that there were there was interest here before? Maybe, maybe, and that's not too much of a stretch. Uh, you know, to know that 64 year round number uh, and uh, there was high liquidity here once once before, uh, basically half an hour before. OK, uh, are they going to show up again? Right. But here I've got it historically. So I anticipate there to be um, traders start to line up here again to show interest as price comes down. OK, we will see. OK, but that's how it can help you. All right. I, I hope that uh, answers your question. Okay. I mean, I think, Alexander, what you're looking for is um, uh, be, the, the problem here with the liquidity is it, it is they can they can pull it like like you're um, like you're saying. Uh, so we don't know. Right. And they can pull any of it at any time or they can they can skew the book at any time with high liquidity. Let's say they jump in here with really high liquidity. Um, uh, on the uh, on the bid, wow! I mean, price is going to you know most likely go whoa and 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 trade up here into some of these areas uh, probably pretty quickly. But um, uh, so the transactions though are set in stone. That is true, you know, and that is uh, we just we know that there were there were transactions here. Okay, and that that is a, a little more. Um, uh, substantial in, in terms of, um, uh, you know, just knowing exactly, you know, where it traded, where traders are committed here, where we don't know if they're committed uh, in some of these areas because they're pulling. So it's a little more elusive. And I understand that point very well. Okay. But uh, these are great questions, and I want to go over them in detail because, uh, uh, you know, uh, being able to understand these areas are, are key and putting it into context. Okay, so let's see what, what unfolds now. We're testing the third time here, no, fourth time, the top of this range. 
Okay, let's see if the buyers show up. Let's see if we get a skew in the book. And let's see if we can come up and test 68 now. All right. Okay, that's one, one of the scenarios that might unfold here. Okay, we might find sellers too. But right now, uh, you know, I, I'm looking for 68 to get tested. I would anticipate that. Okay, um, let's see here. Let's move on. Um, okay, now see here comes some interest here at 67. Okay, that that's look how that repelled price. Okay, high liquidity jumps in here, and that put the kibosh on that. Now that's new information. That's that's why it repelled price. Okay. Well, well, we'll we'll see. We'll see how this auction unfolds. But uh, uh, still, uh, you know, reading this here, um, we, you know, we see the transactions as well, uh, and we see the buying transactions occurring up at these areas here. So um, uh, that that's boding well for uh, having this still being tested here at 67. Okay. Now those guys are pulling at 67. We're starting to see some interest come in here at uh, 65 and three quarters. All right, we'll just keep an eye on it as I continue to go through some of these questions. Um, yeah, uh, I understand your point, um, that longer term liquidity and then it pulls, okay? Well, as we start to read this, um, I mean, if if volume gave such a great uh, great insight uh, to to all of this, then you know all of us would be making money uh, on every single trade all the time, right? But it it doesn't, you know, it's elusive. Like this here, you know, you could say, well, there's more more volume trading down here at the at a lower low. Well, maybe you would look for you know continuation, but that's not the case. What really unfolded here was there's, there's high liquidity. It was one tick below. Uh, a lot of it got filled down in this area here, and we see aggressive buying, uh, and it's the aggressor here, okay? Uh, more selling down here, but then the aggressor comes in here and lifts the, uh, lifts the offer, right? You would have been smoked down here too, just smoked, right? That was a trap. It was the intent. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, anyway, you know, I, I think um, I, I would still go through and I would um, I would recommend uh, taking the, the volume dots off of your chart uh, to understand liquidity. Don't focus on that volume. You're already an expert at reading the volume. Okay. Now start to read the liquidity. Okay. And then, then you'll be able to, I think it would be easier to integrate that back in. And then go through this kind of process of understanding. Okay, there, we're, the market is being made between these two areas here. That's why we are channeling between areas of high liquidity. Uh, and then uh, as we come up and test these guys here, these guys pull. Okay, so the market starts to trade up into this area now here. Okay, I'm still looking for buyers to to uh, to be honest to, to step in, uh, but the um, uh, with with high liquidity uh, on the bid. You know, uh, looking to skew that uh, and looking for a test of uh, 68. Right? But uh, we uh, we haven't seen that really unfold yet. Okay? We are we are getting insight here in terms of volume. Okay, very little traded here on this on this retest to the to the low. Okay, so this is accepting now at this point. Anyway. Um, Yeah, try it, try it without the volume dots. I think that might be helpful. Um, yeah, magnets, magnets, Billy. Um, that longer term liquidity. Um, well, think of think of it this way: uh, longer term liquidity in a marketplace, uh, it, price is attracted to it because it, it knows it can trade there. Okay, so a lot of times it can act as magnets, um, and. Um, uh, you know, if price is far away, like these these areas up here at 68 and 69 are kind of acting like magnets. You know, the market knows that it can trade up here. Okay, where does the market know it can trade on the uh, um, on the bid? 
right? And and this is this is uh, this is another contextual insight. Okay, this is pretty profound stuff. Uh, and just a very basic uh, market uh, mechanics here. The um, uh, these areas here. Well, if there's not a lot of liquidity, and you're not seeing a lot of selling activity here, okay, then uh, then this area here is um, uh, you know rather rather dead. Like uh, market can't trade here. Market is exploring right now to the upside because it knows it can trade up here. Okay, if you look at trends, uh, and let's let's find a, an example of a trending market. Let's see if oil how how oil's doing here. Zoom out a little bit. Mm, horrible example of a trend. What about Nas Nasdaq? Okay. Let's zoom into this area here. All right, let's see if we can uh, we can spot it. Okay, but what you'll see, mm, not a really good example. Uh, not not so bad, I guess, as I zoom out. Um, is um, yeah, it's not the greatest example either, uh, but it, somewhat true. Okay, look at the transactions down at these lower uh, or these at these lows, these swing lows. Okay. Compare those to the highs. Look at the transactions up here. Okay, this is this is indicative of a trending market. Okay, is you get more volume and 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 um, more aggressor, uh, uh, you know, classification here of buying at these higher highs. It's pulling the market up, and we continue to break and make new highs. And uh, what about the liquidity? Where is the liquidity? Well, it was here. They actually pulled here and added at a higher level. Pulled here and added to a higher level as well. Okay, so it it's looking for that liquidity. It's it's being revalued in the trend here, looking for liquidity on the uh, on these highs. Okay, it's uh, it needs that liquidity to validate it. It's that's where it can trade. Right, that is people are determining by by showing their offers uh, where the market can trade, and it's it's determining the value uh, within this trend. Okay. It can determine the value in the trend. Okay. Uh, COB uh, plus minus. A lot of traders like that. Uh, they like to see that what was uh, pulled, uh, and they know their markets very well. Uh, let's take a look at oil, um, and um, uh, let's. Uh, uh, Add a new column. I'm just going to right-click. I'm going to insert a column here. Then I'm going to right-click in this column. I'm going to choose a, a different data type, the quotes delta. Okay. So this is what this is showing here. And let's move it. I'm going to just left-click, hold, and drag it over. Okay. This is showing liquidity that is either added or pulled. Positive number is added. Negative number it's pulled at these price levels. Okay, so a lot of traders they won't even want to look at the COB. Uh, they want to look at what's added and pulled instead. Okay, it's up to you. Uh, you know, you have all the tools here to uh, uh, to look at you know whatever it is that uh, that you want. Okay. All right, let's go back to that S and P. Just curious, uh, and then uh, let's see here. Okay. All right, so um, all right, we're coming up on an hour here, so uh, a few more questions, and let me uh, let's get through some of this. And uh, uh, happy to answer. These are excellent questions, and um, I hope that they are helping you. Um, so let's see the next. Could he being pulled? The liquidity that has been pulled out as a strategy since auction. This auction, come on. Um, Francisco, I mean, uh, as a strat, I mean, well, you know, skews in the book in the auction. Yeah, I mean, that is a strategy that uh, many of the algos are 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 doing. That's that was that is exactly their intent, and it's predatory uh, in a lot of cases. They don't they don't care about at, uh, trading in some of those areas. They want to skew the book to their advantage, right? Uh, and um, uh, they're, they're looking to uh, maybe uh, like these guys here. I mean, you can argue. I mean, I, I don't really see it. 
uh, maybe a little bit of spoofing type of activity here and maybe in here because they pulled as well. Uh, but uh, is to hold the price down, uh, you know, get filled in some of these areas here uh, and then uh, and then pull as price comes back up and rotates back up. OK. Yeah. Heck, yeah, that can be a strategy. Uh, it's uh, uh, disruptive uh, and um, uh, you can be, uh, you know, criminal criminally uh, um, uh, prosecuted uh, for that activity if you. Uh, uh, if you use it now, okay. All right. So anyway, um, you know, we're you we're starting to get into more and more levels of context and understanding of liquidity and how these markets trade. All right. So uh, we're 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 putting the pieces here together. All right. So in this little channel here. I mean, we, let's turn on our uh, one of our add-ons here, because uh, Alexander, your next question went on to the add-ons. Okay, well, check this out. I mean, we can see some of these. Uh, uh, this is our iceberg detector. Okay, so they're using uh, some in some cases. Some of these traders are using iceberg orders to get filled in some of these areas here. Okay, they're not showing it in the limit order book. Uh, they're using the hidden order. Okay, so maybe this kind of spoofing activity, I always uh, look for this. If you, we see a high liquidity here that skews the book, I'm looking to see if maybe that iceberg um, indicator on the other side here uh, starts to really tick up. Okay. All right. Uh, I, also, I see icebergs on this side here, heavy, you know, 2,300 contracts as well. So, I mean, this, this area was a battle between the two. Now I see 1,600 over here too. So these guys are still involved here on the sell side, right? And uh, I, I, the the breakouts here, I mean, we were looking for 68 to be tested, but it's it's really pretty slow here. You know, there's still a skew to the upside. Uh, you know, based on the uh, the volume and transactions here, but uh, uh, and the target here 68. Well, you know, we're seeing more and more. You know. Uh, icebergs as well. I mean, these guys get it wrong too, you know. So, uh, you know, they'll flip out pretty quickly if, uh, uh, you know, the, the pressure becomes too great. But, you know, sellers are, are involved here and we're not breaking out by much here, right? So it's, it's pretty slow. Um, anyway, uh, let's see here. Get on into the... Um, Volume indicators. Okay, uh, so these uh, th this is an add-on indicator up here, the volume and book and balance, uh, and how to use that. Well, it's the center line here is you know the 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 measurement graphically. So if you see a skew to the plus side, it'll 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 kind of uh, bump up uh, into uh, this this panel here, right? Okay, same for the book, right? And how how can this be helpful? Well, you're looking for um, you know, more, it, more aggressive volume to, to give you, uh, uh, an insight. And then the book, uh, maybe combined with that, or, you know, maybe you're looking for, uh, uh, you know, the, these areas here, like, uh, uh, if we zoom in, you know, it, ma it makes a calculation here for the chart range. Okay. So look at now we have a skew of plus nine. Okay. We know that there's more aggressive volume in here on, on the buy side. We know that because we can see it in the color of the dots. But now we have a percentage number on it too. You can get very specific. What about this little micro range here? We'll put that range into your chart, and we can see that the skew here is 25% now. All right. So there's different ways to use that uh, indicator. And then the same with the uh, the book and balance. Okay. It's uh, uh, trying to understand the... Um, uh, you know, that liquidity and, and where they're starting to line up here. Okay. okay. Yeah. Turned on the icebergs. Um, let's see. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad this is uh, being, being helpful for, for some of you guys here. Uh, Scott, at the moment, uh, no, you don't. You can you can access all of the uh, videos on YouTube there. Okay. Uh, 
for instance, uh, Alexander, I lost the um, the reference here to what you're questioning. 11.52. Does the session volume profile uh, start aggregating when you open up bookmap? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can reset it as well. Um, there are resets available for it. Uh, you know, just uh, right click in that window here. Okay, our session range, uh, and um, uh, just uh, click on reset here. Okay, and you and you know m most guys like to uh, uh, you know they won't have the session range volume reset every minute, second hour, whatever, but they'll they'll choose a specific time. Okay, and uh, you know you put in like 9:30 or something like that. Right for your cash, cash open. That's a that's a, a great way to use it. Okay. All right, Robert. Hope that answers your question. Okay. Have a good weekend, Francisco. Um, okay. What refresh makes sense? Um, yeah, okay, I'll cover that in just a minute here. Um, simply put, liquidity means buy limit and sell limit orders. That is correct, Victor. Okay, it's uh, where they're bidding and offering. Okay, and it's it's with limit orders. Add-on indicator. Um, Scott, I don't I don't know what um, – uh, if you're in the trial uh, and you have you you know have the subscription going, the add-on indicators uh, in Bookmap, uh, there are a host of them. You can see most of them here: uh, the iceberg detector, large lot tracker, order book, and volume and balance. Uh, the cumulative volume delta is for everybody. Uh, correlation tracker is another one here. But you can have other markets correlated on top, uh, and uh, the ability to trade from the chart is huge. Okay, the one-click trading. Okay. And the iceberg detector you can see here. Okay, I covered that one already. All right. Okay, so voila, here we are. We've tested now 68. Okay. So that was the target. And how did they behave when they got up there? Let's get rid of this. Okay. Anyway, you can trade right here in this in this window here on the chart. Okay. Actually, let me demo that really quickly for you. Okay, just choose a size. And uh, here are a bunch of limit orders. Uh and now I'm providing liquidity uh, in the book. Okay, you can also, you know, uh, move these uh, as you like. Uh, and uh, this is what I was talking about front running. So let's say you're a seller, you, know, you can front run it by a tick. But let's say this is your stop. Well, maybe I'll hide it behind that high liquidity up here. All right, let's cancel all, and I'll disable this. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, you can press. Uh, you can also place a stop. Uh, limit orders they're available uh, let me show you okay so um, we have one uh, selected here uh, and um, uh, you'll hold down okay so let me uh, left clicking in this window is always going to be a buy if I'm below price it's going to be a limit buy on the bid okay uh, if I left click uh, above price it's going to be a market uh, buy order Okay, and I'll be filled in the market here. I'll, I'll click up here at uh, 69 and a quarter, and I'll show you. I clicked here, but I was filled here on the best offer. Here's my position right here. Okay, and you can see my position here in the window. All right, so there I am. Uh, that was a market buy. Now I can also pl press um, uh, or hold down the shift key, and then I'm also going to left click. Okay, and look at the line type here. It's a double dashed, not a single dashed. Okay, this is a buy stop. Okay, uh, so if the market comes up here and uh, trades into uh, this level here, this will ignite into a market buy order. Okay, you can use your bracketed orders here. Let's uh, let's flatten the position, um, and uh, so uh, let's uh, here I'll do an, another market buy. Okay, and I'll show you the uh, bracketed orders. Okay, so here's my target here uh, with the, the cell. Uh, I'll just move it up here so you can see it better at 70. And then here's my my stop. Okay, so if, if the market comes down here and touches the stop at 67, uh, I'll be stopped out of the market. Okay, 
this is a, this will turn into a market sell and it will liquidate my position all right okay let's flatten that okay all right Uh, let's see, Scott, uh, add on indicators. Uh, any, any other questions on that? Okay. That's, uh, one of them there was part of the package is the, uh, the ability to trade from the chart, which is a really nice advantage. Um, okay. Uh, due to that, uh, I mean, there's so many different features here, um, due to the market, um, uh, uh, or, you know, the ability to trade from the chart, we also have some, uh, uh, that that will allow you to trade uh, some of our automated strategies here. There's chase, escape, and execute. All right. So uh, these are automated strategies and algos that will work price within an area. Um, they 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 work on limit orders. Uh, I'll demo that another time. It will take a you know a little bit of time to explain it. Uh, but very very powerful. You can actually have those market. Uh, or have your limit order is kind of working like a market maker uh, within uh, this area here. So, you know, and, and you can see, you know, that market making, I'll show you how they, they're behaving by uh, uh, taking down this, brightening up that. Let's bring this down. Okay. So, okay. So here we go. So notice this kind of dark, um, uh, outline around price and that's that's because there's you know a lack of liquidity the market making algos are in these little areas here providing liquidity then pulling okay providing liquidity and pulling so uh, that's what they do all day long and then at a specific time these market making algos they will shut um, uh, they will stop working they will remain in line and they'll get filled okay they will provide liquidity uh, and, uh, and you see it, you'll see it all the time, uh, you know, and, um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, the, these algos, these automated, uh, strategies here that we have, uh, can, can make your, your, um, your orders work very much like that kind of mimic that behavior if, if you like. Um, so, um, uh, it's up to you. Okay. You will need to sign a waiver for that. Okay. Yes, Scott, the, the add-ons come with the uh, um, advanced subscription. When you say bookmap helps you uh, locate hunting algos, do you mean I can see those white bands? Well, yeah, basically. I mean, uh, you know, what I'm talking about here are the um, – is is getting back to that, that uh, distinction between longer-term liquidity and – uh, high liquidity and uh, shorter term uh, high liquidity in it, in it skewing the book. Okay. So for example, in this little area here, look at this little pocket. Let's zoom in here. Very high liquidity. Look at that. Uh, you know, just jumping into the book, skewing the, skewing the auction. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, a, a price starts to, uh, you know, it starts to get repelled by it. Okay. And it moves just a couple ticks, but, you know, it, it did move. Uh, and then we trade in this little narrow range here of like uh, three ticks, four ticks. Okay. Anyway, and then they, and then they, they kind of jump out, uh, in, at least in these cup, uh, two ticks, but they remain here uh, in this area. Okay. And that's why th that was, you know, kind of bullish. Uh, and then they start pulling here. That's kind of bearish. Uh, and uh, we see another, look at that little skew here. Okay. So, this is where, you know, it, it's, it is best. And we can see, look at how, I mean, you, you, you have the data here, but it can be a distraction uh, in the sense that we don't need to look at all these details, but it is here. And it, it, we're recording exactly how these markets are behaving. Look at how this high liquidity here was pulled here, added down here. It's got to be the same player, right? So they're working price within this area. All right. So uh, uh, anyway, um, you know, but we don't we don't really need to uh, to know that, uh, you know, we, we read this um, very nicely and slowly uh, back here, like, uh, you know, after uh, 1130 here. 
looking for that 68 level and then 69 uh, as potential targets. Okay, and that's exactly what what uh, unfolded. All right. So anyway, uh, let's wrap it up, guys. It's been a long webinar. Um, and uh, I wanted to go through these uh, uh, excellent questions, though, because um, uh, this is what uh, most uh, traders are asking about um, uh, as well. Okay, so uh, this—that's what these webinars are are here for, uh, to answer those questions for you and start to understand how to uh, read this market data to your advantage. All right. Okay. Yeah, you guys are welcome. Yeah. All right. Well, let's call it a day. Let's call it a week. And we will catch up with you guys next week. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Have a good weekend.